All right, so in this problem we're told, determine the total force and the absolute pressure on the bottom of a swimming pool, 28 meters by 8.5 meters, whose uniform depth is 1.8 meters. B, what will be the pressure against the side of the pool near the bottom? So the first thing you always wanna do is draw a picture. So you can imagine this right here is our pool and we're looking at it through the side of it. So this is the top of the pool. And we know the depth to the bottom is gonna be 1.8 meters. So we know that. And then you can imagine that this is, we're looking at the pool from the top and we, we're given its dimension. So it's gonna be 28 meters in length by 8.5 meters in width. And so that's the information we're given. And what we're trying to find for A is the total force and the absolute pressure. So we're gonna start by finding absolute pressure at the bottom of the pool. So the formula for absolute pressure, P, is equal to, this is your atmospheric pressure plus your gauge pressure. So basically you can see the formulas here. And so the atmospheric pressure is basically the pressure uh, due to the atmosphere. And so it's always equal to, or at sea level, it's basically equal to one atmosphere. So uh, the pressure due to the atmosphere or the atmospheric pressure is one ATM. And then you also have the gauge pressure. And so the gauge pressure is equal to rho GH. So as a result of the water, it's gonna have some pressure at the bottom here, and that's what your gauge pressure is. So we're gonna have to add up both of these if we want to solve for uh, the total pressure. So uh, the first thing you need to know is when we do these, we need it in not, um, not atmospheres, we do it in Pascal. So uh, we have to convert these, or one atmosphere, because when we add this, we need to make sure it's in Pascals, not atmospheres. So you need to know the conversion. One atmosphere is equal to 1.013 times 10 to the five, and then pascals, you can write it like that, but the units of a pascal are just uh, newtons per meter squared. So that's what a pascal is. And then now we have one atmosphere. So as I said before, your absolute pressure is equal to uh, your atmospheric pressure, which we know is one ATM since we're at sea level. So 1.013 times 10 to the five. And then we're just gonna add up rho GH, which is our gauge pressure. So let me explain that. So what rho is, it's your density of your fluid. So in this case, the fluid is gonna be water. All right, we're assuming the pool is filled with water. And uh, we know that the density of water, rho, is equal to uh, 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed. That's the density of water. So we know rho, 1,000. Uh, G is just the acceleration due to gravity, which is a constant, which is just 9.8 meters per second squared. Uh, and then your h is the height, right, relative to your point to the free surface. So it's basically the distance, since we're doing it at the bottom of the pool, all the way to the free surface, which is uh, basically where the water connects with the air. So this distance right here is 1.8 meters, and you always take it to be vertical here. So uh, the distance or h in this formula is just 1.8. All right, cool. So now what we're going to want to do is plug this into our calculator. You're going to have 1.015 uh, times 10 to the 5 plus 1,000 uh, times 9.8 times 1.8. And so when you do this, you're going to get 118940. Uh, obviously, we're dealing with, uh, this is going to be newtons per meter squared, since that's what we used here. Uh, and then we can rewrite this as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So basically, 1.2 times 10 to the 5 newtons per meter squared. You can write it in Pascals if you'd like, so PA. I'm just going to leave it like this, though. And uh, yeah, so this would be your absolute pressure or your answer to, or half the answer to the first part. Uh, but what they also want us to find is the force, the total force at the bottom. And so the way we do this is using this formula. So you should know the formula for pressure is equal to force over uh, the area, which in this case, uh, we want force. So we would multiply both sides by A. So essentially, uh, the force is going to be equal to the pressure multiplied by the surface area that it's acting on. So in this case, we're looking at the bottom of the swimming pool. And so we know the pressure at the bottom of the swimming pool. We just solved for it. It is 1.2 times 10 to the 5, right? So that's that value. And then, uh, or sorry, I'm actually going to use the more exact value. Let me go back. So 1.189, we'll say just to get a more exact value. And then what is the area of the bottom of the swimming pool? Well, we know if we look at the top, this would be your bottom, or this would basically be the bottom of the swimming pool. So if we wanted the area of it, we would just multiply, uh, right, to find the area of a 
a rectangle like this, you just do length times width. So in this case, we know the length is 28 meters. So 28, uh, multiplying that by 8.5. Let's go ahead and do that. So 28 times 8.5 is equal to 238. And then our units would be meters squared, right? Because you have meters here, meters here. Uh, so you get meters squared. And so, yeah, this would be your area. So uh, it's really just a matter of plugging it in now. So 28. Or sorry, not 28. What was it again? 238? Yeah, sorry about that. Uh, so 238. And then let me go ahead and plug this into our calculator. So times uh, 238. And yeah, so when you do this, you're going to get 28307720. Uh, obviously, we're going to put this in scientific notation. Uh, since we're dealing with force here, it's in newtons. So make sure when you do this, you have it in uh, Pascal's which is just newtons per meter squared, and then you just have meters squared, right? Because notice you have newtons per meter squared, which is this, multiplying it by meters squared, and then you get newtons, which is what we want force in. Uh, but yeah, so this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So the force is 2.8 times 10 to the seven newtons. So uh, uh, what they're looking for is the force at the bottom of the pool, the total force is this right here, right? Because notice they say total force, so that's how we know we're going to be using uh, the total pressure, which is basically the absolute pressure. Uh, but yeah, so 2.8 times 10 to the 7 newtons, that's your force. Uh, your absolute pressure here is 1.2 times 10 to the 5 uh, newtons per meter squared. And yeah, so these are your answers to A. Now let's move on to B. So B is going to be pretty quick. Uh, basically, they ask, uh, what will be the pressure against the side of the pool uh, near the bottom? So the trick to this is it's, it's going to be the same exact value as this. So basically, your answer is just uh, 1.2. Keep in mind, this is absolute pressure. 1.2 times 10 to the 5 newtons per meter squared. Now, why is this? So basically, pressure doesn't really have a direction, right? It's not directional. So it only is dependent on basically how far down it is. So it doesn't actually matter uh, if they say the side or whatever. It's the same. So doesn't actually change so the side at the bottom of the pool is the same as at the bottom so honestly it doesn't really change uh, but yeah so 1.2 times 10 to the 5 newtons per meter squared basically the same as a that's going to be your answer to b and yeah just a quick rundown of how we did this uh, basically you just use the pressure formula and you have to know the difference between absolute pressure and gauge pressure where absolute is your atmosphere pressure plus your gauge right and you should know atmosphere pressure at uh, sea level, which is where we're assuming we're at, is just one atmosphere. Uh, and then make sure you uh, convert it to the correct units. And then it's just a matter of plugging it in. And then you get your a uh, absolute pressure. And then you got to use the pressure equals force over area. All we had to do is just calculate the area for that. Uh, and then just plug it back in to get your force. And then for B, as I said, they're the same since uh, there's no direction, right? So the pressure at the bottom of the pool on the side, like right here, you could say, is the same as it is here. So no difference there. Uh, but yeah, so these are going to go ahead and be your answers. And hopefully you found this video useful.